facility. It was stormed by Al-Qaeda-linked fighters. 800 people were taken hostage and it was two days before Algerian security forces stormed the site to secure it. 39 foreign workers died alongside a local security guard. On this first anniversary, our reporter Alexandra Reynard meets a French woman who survived and the son of a Frenchman slain in the attack. Muriel was the only female expatriate working at the Inamenas gas extraction facility. On the second day of the hostage crisis, the nurse found a way to escape the compound as around 40 Islamist terrorists stormed their way in. Recently, former Algerian colleagues sent her these pictures taken in her room and office just after the attack. You can see one, two, three, four bullet marks. That's where I used to work, at this computer. When I saw these pictures, I was so relieved I managed to escape because these shots were aimed at a person's height and I could have been sitting there. It was 5.50 a.m. when the emergency siren went off. Thinking there had been an accident, Muriel quickly put on a chemical protection suit. We had no idea what was going on. We were waiting for the control room to give us an update on the situation, and we were wondering why the alarm. Then an engineer came running towards us yelling, it's a terrorist attack, they're armed, go and hide. So we all started running, looking for somewhere to conceal ourselves. We were told to lock ourselves in the offices or in our rooms and wait for the army to arrive. That's what most people did if they could. I'm not saying that's why some of my colleagues were killed, but many of those who hid in offices or their rooms ended up getting caught by the terrorists. Some were killed immediately. At the time of the attack, 800 people were working on the huge industrial complex, including 140 expats from a dozen different countries. At first, Muriel hid in her office, some three kilometers from the living quarters. With explosions and gunshots going off all around, she turned on her radio to learn that buildings were on fire and hostages being executed. After waiting 25 terrifying hours, she decided to try and escape. Algerian colleagues hit her within their group, sneaking her under the compound's boundary fence. Once outside, they walked towards a unit of the Algerian army, their hands up, so as not to be mistaken for terrorists. When I first arrived at this facility, I did raise the question of security. This was Algeria, and right by the border with Libya. But I was always told not to worry, that the compound was heavily guarded by the Algerian army, that this was a secure perimeter and difficult to penetrate. They said the place was so huge, it was like a country within a country, and you practically needed a visa just to enter the area. I was told that there were army patrols, military vehicles stationed nearby, and even drones circling the area, so there would be no problem. But what haunts me now is how could these terrorists have had such easy access to the compound and the living quarters? A year has passed, but Muriel has been unable to go back to work. She's now trying to rebuild her life abroad and has just finished co-writing a book investigating the Inamenas hostage crisis. She hopes that an international team of investigators will eventually reveal just what happened during those two dramatic days. I'd like the Algerian government to share with us all the information they managed to extract from the terrorists they captured. Tell us how the Algerian army led the assault. I think they do have precious information, but so far there's been no cooperation on their side at all. Florian is the son of Yann Desjeux, the French hostage killed during the attack. He feels much the same as Muriel that Algeria and all the other countries who lost nationals in Inamenas have yet to cooperate and give a clear picture of what took place last January. When I saw my father's coffin surrounded by nearly 40 other coffins, I suddenly realized this had been a massacre and I vowed that I would get to the truth about what had happened. Florian left his job and has spent the last year investigating the assault himself. We know for a fact that people had access to the compound, even though they shouldn't have been there. The people in charge of security didn't know these men were on site. 
We also know there had been several incidents with bus drivers threatening foreign workers, saying they would die if they continued working there. Florian's father was deputy head of the compound's security. He was aware of these threats and had asked for increased security measures, which never materialized. When terrorists stormed the place, they had very detailed notes, names, room numbers, phone numbers. They even had the home addresses in Norway of Norwegian workers. The terrorists knew exactly what they were doing, and they knew the place very well. They knew that there were several VIPs, foreign delegates, and company managers on site. There's no way they could have known all that without inside help. In France, prosecutors have opened a formal inquiry into the hostage-taking and subsequent Algerian army operation. But their investigation will depend on whether the Algerian authorities allow a French judge to inspect the Inamenas premises. You're watching Live from Paris here on France 24. Time for sports now, starting with all the latest from the sweltering Australian Open. Frenchman Joe Wilfred Songer 